Pokemon the original series had a lot of flaws, and I think it is worth fixing them, especially since the show has recently got rebooted, so it is important to learn from the mistakes they made so that way they can improve from then on. We'll be focusing on story and plot, as having a stronger story doesn't cost much and could actually have been done at the time, while better animation would have cost more money and couldn't necessarily have been done. This is a long video, so feel free to use the timestamp in the chapters below to skip around and watch the sections you care about the most. I started this bit more than four months ago as my first video, and it went through a lot of changes, including it being split into two parts, the first part being released as my first video, but then the quality was so low that I have remade the entire video as you're witnessing right now. So first, let's talk about what makes Pokemon good and what also what makes the original series good too. Pokemon is one of the few kids anime out there, as most anime are meant for a mature audience. Pokemon is TVG, and even Prime Video says that, and you know how strict Prime Video is in their ratings. I've seen PG-13 movies get a 16 plus rating, and TV PG shows get a TV-14 rating. Pokemon also has a large catalog of episodes and characters, so you can watch Pokemon for months. Pokemon also has emotional episodes too, and often has good themes. They have some pretty good action and battles that children can enjoy. Plus it is a long kids show as a journey, which is rare. Plus, it's one of the few kids' shows that doesn't rely on childish characters to make it watchable as an older audience, instead it relies on characters in action. Now, what makes Pokemon the original series stand out? First off, it feels connected from beginning to end. It also has a large and beloved cast of Pokemon, and has a lot of character development for Ash. Ash, amongst other characters, look pretty good compared to later in the anime, as this is the only time Ash doesn't have baggy pants and actually looks like a tween that was in the reboot. Now, let's get to how we could have improved. Now, Pokemon is a kids' show, and like most anime, it airs almost every week until it gets cancelled. So that meant while the first handful of episodes was planned ahead, the rest were being written as the show went on. So that meant there was a time pressure. Usually that leads to the story being stretched across many more episodes to keep it going, compared to a show that gets released in seasons, as a seasonal show not only has to deal with fewer episodes with more time, but aren't usually forced to release their episodes on a certain date. Often the stretch gets so thin in some areas that it becomes a filler episode, and it could potentially be skipped. And this could also occur on seasonal shows. Most kids slash family shows have filler episodes. Now, there are two types of shows. One is a show that doesn't have much story and could be watched in pretty much any order. Most of the common comedies are like this, so pretty much every episode is filler because it is supposed to. Take the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, for example. You can watch any episode, like the 3rd or the 40th, and it'll make sense. There are also shows that have a story, or at least a journey and goal. Pokemon is a journey of a guy who wants to be the very best and has a goal. You can't watch it in any order, and it requires it to be watched in chronological order in order to understand what is going on. They don't have many filler, epi filler episodes, and when they do, they usually consist of character development or a bit of plot advancement. Pokemon's filler has character development, what characters we see come and leave in the same episode. And that is the first big problem of Pokemon. So many episodes are wasted on unnecessary characters. These characters become the main character of the episode, and our actual main character is then just there to help them develop. And at the end of the episode, the new character leaves. It's hard to care about these characters because they stop our main cast on their journey, and then we have to spend 20 minutes straight with them developing them, but barely touching our main cast, and then never see them again. It's like eating pizza every meal for a month, and then not eating it again for five years. How are we supposed to care about this episode? In fact, it gives the new Pokemon episode barely any value and it's so skippable. And while we could still have filler episodes, it is best just to get rid of them all and focus on the story. Unless it is a rare episode, which is enjoyable and has a character slash plot development we want, then that stays. So just turning over a new bay leaf, which deserves to stay in the show because of bay leaf and Ash's character development. And we are also going to keep the competitions and treat them more like a step to Ash's goal instead of just a filler episode so whenever Ash wins, he can actually carry a physical trophy or medal and can be kept in Ash's trophy collection at home and can be looked back on. By the way, Ash's Kanto and Jim, Jojo gym badges aren't in that collection so I think we should add that in because they are an achievement too. So, now since we took up more than 100 episodes, we now have a chance to focus on the story, which actually has a few plot lines not wrapped up and not really developed. Now that makes filler episodes really bad, because of the amount of opportunities that were to focus on the plot line. Well, we took out the filler episodes and resolved issue 1, now let's solve issue 2, which I sort of already mentioned. Underdeveloped plot lines. No, it's not true. It can be split into two issues. One is the movies, one is the characters. Luckily, because we took out the filler episodes, we have a good amount of space to fix this. Okay, most of Pokemon's plot lines were probably incomplete because of a totally big need of movies. And these movies might have made a lot of money in theaters. But only the first three truly made a lot of cash, and the rest could have made almost the same amount through television. Well, it depends on how much the show made. So you know what? The studio wants five movies. Let's give it to them without affecting the overall plot, which I will get a little into later. Now, when I think of shows with lots of episodes and lots of movies, besides Pokemon, I think of Mortu Patlu. Let me explain what this Indian cartoon is. Basically, it's a kid's cartoon cat slapstick. It is similar to Spongebob, but less controversial in whether kids should be allowed to watch it or not. It has over 1,000 episodes and over 25 movies, and its movie and television system works, because you can only watch episodes, and it makes sense, you can watch only movies, and it makes sense, and you can watch both, and it makes sense. Pokemon struggles in that, because it has a goal and story in the show. The movie either has to be filler, which doesn't feel too enjoyable after watching a show with story, or it can have story, but the story must not ruin the show's story, but should rather add on. 
I'm going to take the MCU as an example. All those solo movies have story, and they add on to the overall universe story, which is kind of like a series. A series of movies instead of episodes. I can watch all the Spider-Man Homecoming movies and it makes sense. I can watch all the MCU movies, say Spider-Man Homecoming and it makes sense. I can watch all the MCU movies and it makes sense. And it feels like to, to add on to each other. So we need to make movies that will add on to the show, but will not disrupt it. And it can also be enjoyable on its own. So we're going to add a few edits to the first one so that way we'll get a little background on who these characters are. And we can do that in the form of origin story we haven't seen before. And then we can get on with the movie and at the end, Mewtwo's spell to make them forget the events won't completely work. As the camera zooms in Ash's head, where there is memory of the events. Now we can do the next four movies adding on to the Mewtwo story. And since these regions both have Team Rocket, which created Mewtwo in the first place, it shouldn't be too hard. Now we're going to place the original second movie into the Orange Islands arc, as now we have so many episode slots empty, in about six episodes plus a few edits. We can also place the original third movie in Johto, with six episodes too, as we can also focus on the other Johto legendaries too. Original fourth movie would be in Johto and actually be part of the GS Ball plotline, which never gets resolved, so that could add on about six episodes worth of plotline. And original fifth movie would be also be in Johto, could add on to the Bailey's plotline with six more episodes. Okay, now we fixed the movies, which was the second issue, now we can look at issue three, which is the characters. Okay, I'm going to character development next. Instead of rambling for hours about which episode slot will cover each aspect and essentially remaking the entire script, I'm just going to keep it simple and talk about what character development we are e even going to do. But character plotlines we're going to talk focus on are obviously going to include Ash, Brock, and Misty, or are they? As Ash develops plenty, but Misty and Brock could use more attention because if you compare them to Ash's future friends, then they get the least progression. No, you know what, I'm not going to spend much time on them as they can develop plenty by using just a fraction of a minute on each episode for them to practice their skills and learn. However, we're going to focus on the Pokemon, Ash's Pokemon specifically because they're cute and awesome, and this show is literally called Pokemon. Plus, Missing Brock are obvious in terms of what they need to develop, while the Pokemon aren't so obvious. Plus, what makes this show unique is that it has Pokemon, something other shows don't have. We decided to focus on Pokemon, but which ones? Obviously, our biggest priority is going to be Raticate since he got the most screen time and deserves... I'm just kidding. But oh my, our Pokemon barely get any screen time in the original filler episodes unless it was one surrounding them. And as most of the time, their job is to just send Team Rocket blasting off again. We're going to fix that. Anyways, let's see what Pokemon we have. We have Pikachu, Butterfree, Pidgeot, Bulbasaur, Charizard, Squirtle, Kingler, Primate, Muck, Tauros, Lapras, Norlax... Heracross, Bayleaf, Quilava, Totodile, Noctowl, and Donphan. And all of those Pokemon, besides the certain three, could use more work. But the other Pokemon don't necessarily have flaws, but rather had missed potential. The certain three are Pikachu, Muck, and Charizard. Yes, all the other Pokemon could use more work. Pikachu is Pikachu. We all know why he's awesome. It isn't as if he's one of our two protagonists. We're going to talk about Muck later. Anyways, Charizard, besides Pikachu, was one of the only characters that have an interesting beginning which is almost all of Ash's Pokemon, an interesting middle, and an interesting end, which our Jota Pokemon don't really get thanks to Reset, which I'll get more into later. Charizard begins as a Charmander, who was abandoned by his trainer because he was far too weak, and not accepting it. After realizing the truth, he burns the ashes out of him and becomes Ash's Pokemon. He was an adorable, loyal Pokemon while a Charmander. Then, when he evolves into a Charmeleon, he thinks Ash is too weak and stops avoiding him. Pretty ironic for what he was before. He soon evolves into Charizard because he just wanted to prove himself to an endangered dragon species. He then caused Ash to lose an Indigo League which, because he thought a Pikachu was not ready to fight him, which probably caused millions of people to start yelling at the screen the first time they saw it. Talk about a frustrating character! Cough, cough! Sorry. <coughs> Me too, sorry. Okay. Then after Ash saves Charizard in the Orange Islands, Charizard starts obeying him because he now sees Ash is worthy to, enough to listen to and helps bring Ash an Orange League trophy. And it's not over, likely because the Kanto Pokemon didn't have to suffer from a total reset! Cough! Cough! Instead, three of the most iconic Kanto Pokemon Ash had, and also the most beloved, got to journey throughout some of Johto, keeping our Kanto loyalists still there. In fact, I probably wouldn't have stopped through Johto if it weren't for the three starters being there until we got used to the new ones. Anyways, Charizard got a fantastic temporary goodbye by proving himself worthy to get into Charizard Trailing Grounds. I mean, Charizard Training Grounds. Sorry, speaking a little too fast because, you know, this is the longest section in the video and I don't want you to guys to get um, bored and leave. I need you guys to be here. Please, please, please. By the way, I just need to mention again that there are timestamps in chapters in the description below. Because I don't think any of you guys are going to stick through the whole video, which is 50 minutes, which is about going to be about 50 minutes long. 
So yeah, feel free to use them to go to your favorite Pokemon. But first, listen. Listen throughout so that way you guys know what I'm doing. I don't know about you, but even though that is pretty average for Wheel of Time book character work, this is no epic fantasy and a kid's anime. A kid's anime that is called Pokemon but doesn't give much attention to them. Especially in Journeys, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. So, how in the world are we going to turn all uh, the Pokemon as amazing as Charizard? By using your empty episode slots wisely. And you know what? This video is probably getting overwhelming, so I'm not going to get too specific into what episode slots, but rather what story. Wait, well, I already mentioned that at the beginning. You know, ignore that sentence I said because I already mentioned that. Anyways, we're going to have a checklist. Our checklist will be this. Good beginning, good middle, and good ending. I know that seems oversimplified, especially considering you have one of my favorite characters in all of entertainment. Matt Cotton from the Wheel of Time books didn't have a good beginning, but it should work and will help us know what to fix. Okay, now at this point you can use your chapters to go see your favorite Pokemon. So that way you guys don't leave because you're bored even though there, I made a lot of chapters for you guys. Anyways, let's start off with Pikachu, which I already mentioned as a Pokemon that doesn't need any more work, but I'll just review it anyways. Good beginning. The first episode of the entire series, Pokemon I Choose You, did a good job. Check. Good middle. Plenty of good episodes, such as Showdown in Pure City, Electric Shock Showdown, and Pikachu's Goodbye. Good ending. Last time I checked, Pikachu's story didn't end, so let's just say it's good. Check. Pikachu doesn't need any additional character work. Woohoo! Let's go to Butterfree. Good beginning. The episode Ash Catches a Pokemon did a good job. Check. Good middle. Ash's relationship with Butterfree is well developed, which is shown in the challenge of the Samurai Battle Board of St. Anne. Butterfree himself didn't get much character development. I think all we have to do is get Ash throw out Butterfree's Poke Ball and Pokemon Shipwreck, and I have a little talk, and that should give it a check. Good ending. Butterfree's Goodbye was pretty good. Check. No, Butterfree doesn't need any additional work. Woohoo! Let's go to Butterfree. I mean, why did I say Butterfree? I mean, let's go to Pidgeot. Good beginning. He's caught and Ash catches a Pokemon, and after he gets caught, he's instantly loyal and obedient. But we don't get to see much of him as a character, more of him like a loyal battler. So, what can we do? In Shadow and Pewter City, Pikachu's scared of Brock's large rock Pokemon and tries to call out Pidgeot instead. What we could do is when Pidgeot gets chosen to fight later in the episode, we could have him leave his Pokeball after being called back to encourage Pikachu in his battle or something like that. So now we can check. Good middle. Snow Way Out did it pretty well, but he's not a focus, so I think he needs a bit more time. Maybe him coming out of his Pokemon and Courage Pokemon and battling will work. I don't know. What do you guys think in the comment section below? What should we do with Pidgeot to make him have a bit more personality? Anyways, check. Good ending. I think that in the original Japanese, Ash never promised to come back in Pallet Party Picnic. So if they just fix that in the dub, that would be nice. But if Ash actually did promise in the original too, then we could have Pidgeot return and St. Professor's Oak Lab. But if they want to keep it very emotional, how about when Ash comes back from the Orange Islands, we see that Pidgeot has died, but along with Empiro. Not in a gruesome way, of course, so that we did still DVG and will not make Ash look like a jerk. Anyways, let's get a check because it was probably a translation issue and woohoo! Anyways, let's go to Bulbasaur. Good beginning. Bulbasaur in a hidden village did a good job. Check. Good middle. In the firing squad, Bulbasaur's goodbye to Squirtle was pretty well done. And of course, we already have Snow Way out. Not to mention Island of the Giant Pokemon. Check. Good ending. Bulbasaur the Ambassador was well done plus the episode Taiwan on was also well done. So check. Bulbasaur doesn't need any additional character work and woohoo! Next we have Charizard. Well, we already talked about the story and how it checks off our checklist, which is based on Charizard's story. So anyways, we now have Squirtle. Good beginning. Here comes the Squirtle squad with a good beginning. Check. Good middle. Most of his moments come from the other episodes, so let me do something. We could have an episode where Bulbasaur and Squirtle get out of situation, with the Word Huddle squad coming in too, so that plays a, because, uh, you know, that plays a role in Squirtle's goodbye. And then not only more Squirtle, but more Bulbasaur. So now we can check. Good ending. I already mentioned the firing squad, which was pretty well done. So check. So after having to edit due to a previous change, we can now say, Woohoo! Okay, but next we have Kingler. I think you guys know what is going to happen now. Good beginning. As soon as Kingler is caught in the mystery of the lighthouse, he gets sent to the lab, which is alright. But then when Ash comes to check on him, Ash then notices Gary has a bigger one, and his part ends there. And he next gets seen more than 40 episodes later. Yeah, not the best beginning to scare. However, I didn't mention one thing in the beginning. He gets caught after battling Ash. Yes, yeah, so Ash wanted to prove how he could get a Pokemon by himself without any. Maybe he could extend this battle to show how pushing Kingler can be. Then, when Ash notices how small his Kingler is, who currently crabby, as he can tell Kingler how eventually he's gonna be large and stronger, and Kingler will agree and it will bring us to our next point. Good middle. Good beginning. I got a check, by the way. And he has a pretty good middle already where he manages to defeat not one. Not two, but three Pokemon around one begin, and the World Islands also did some good to him. However, we're going to add a few things here that will contribute to a good beginning. 
Remember that agreement? In Jota, we're going to have a battle between Ash's Kingler and Gary's Kingler, in which Ash's Kingler will come victorious. There will be an honor system between the Kinglers, and Ash's Kingler will shake hands with Ash's. Of course, it just won't be that. And we'll have two other Pokemon set that way in Ge the Gary plot line. We have first have a 1v1, but then a 3v3, and then a 6v6. So the buildup will be a little bit more smooth. Perhaps some of the Pokemon that want against get one of Gary's Pokemon in 6v6 can lose in the 3v3. So that way it'll make the battle even better. And then, of course, good ending. Good middle got a check, by the way. Which is a definite no check as Kingler's ending is him not being able to do the Pokemon League after some Pokemon exploded on him. Well, how about Kingler coming in a battle despite his Hall for Honor? Perhaps one of the battles we're going to add on to the Jota League in our next issue, but anyways, that should make his ending a little bit better, because who doesn't like when a warrior forgets his health for honor? Good ending, check now. Woohoo! Next, we have Primate. Good beginning. The episode of Primate goes bananas, did a pretty good job. Check. Good middle. He has no middle, so let's make the ending a little, move the ending a little bit, and have a few battles and developments in between. Now we can check. Good ending. The episode of Punchy Pokemon was a nice send-off to him. He was not that big of a deal in the first place, so let's just show you check and woohoo and go to Mog. I already mentioned that Mog doesn't need any more works because here's the thing about Mog. He's meant to be humorous. As long as he has his personality, he won't need much more work. And he also got a few time to shine too, so I don't think he needs much work in that either. Woohoo! Next we have Taurus, and um, this is going to be a little difficult because Ash got his 30 Taurus as a joke in the Japanese exclusive episode, The Legend of Dratini, which didn't really serve much of a purpose besides that. I'm surprised that he was even able to air in Japan because I thought the USA was a country that was supposed to have that sort of culture, so if it's not allowed in the USA, it should probably not be allowed in other countries. Or wait, maybe it's because the USA has that sort of culture that they have to keep it away from children because in Japan they don't have to worry about that. Unlike in the USA. Since his dirty Tauros was a joke, Ash didn't even use it in the Indigo League, since it was not meant to be taken seriously. Well, his main Tauros did get a chance in Orange League, and in the Jota League, in the battle against Gary, probably because they realized they could keep the show running a long time. So, why not use Tauros since there was plenty of time? It also had a job as humor whenever Ash came back to Professor Doug Lab. The Orange League and Jota League helped get the character more honor to make him a more memorable Pokemon. However, we could use a bit of an honor system to give him more personality. Woohoo! Next we have Lapras. Good beginning. The episode, the lost Lapras was strong, so check. Good middle. His middle pretty much only has him take Ash to different islands, a race, and have a battle in the Orange League. While fit to be tied in, enter the Dragonite was nice and the swimming is cute, it would be nice to have a couple more battles or perhaps even races, seeing he is before that, seeing the amount of empty space we have to fill in Orange Islands. Now we can give it a check. Good ending. The episode Viva Las Labras was amazing, so definitely yes. Plus, the episode Lapras of Luxury was a nice reunion, though I would have liked more time with Lapras himself. Check, and time to say, Woohoo! Now, our last counter Pokemon, Snorlax. Good beginning. The episode of Snack Attack may not have been as emotional, but it was definitely fun to watch. Plus, I identified Snorlax's personality from the start. Check, good middle. They participated in the wrestling competition, which was the episode Ring Masters. But we're going to have a little bit more focus on Snorlax because remember, eating is something that all Snorlaxes like to do. We're going to have to extinguish him from the rest. Culture is just a skin of the character. Plus, to help build up for the Jota League, I think a few more battles before that would have been nice. Now we can give it a check and now, good ending. The episode in the Orange League against Gary was pretty cool. Check and now time to say, Woohoo! Now on to Johto. Our first Johto Pokemon will be Heracross. Good beginning. The episode of Sappy ending was a nice start, but maybe a little bit more focused on what makes Heracross different from the rest. Check. Good middle. Most of Heracross's battle come from filler episodes, and since I kind of took that out, in which they need to blast off Team Rockets, so it doesn't get that much time to shine. So maybe a few more normal battles in non-filler episodes would be nice. And then there's that episode of Tricks of Trade, in which we do get introduced a while back for a place like it's on. However, in that episode, we also have to say goodbye to Heracross, since apparently he was an interesting subject to test on for Professor Oak. Obviously, this is because a few episodes later we get Noctowl, and Ash can only carry six Pokemon at a time. However, one of his six Pokemon was a Bulbasaur, and he didn't really do much in Johto anyway, since he was amongst two of Ash's grass Pokemon in hand. I think Bulbasaur the Ambassador should have come early on, so that way not only would Bailey get more chances to shine, but also get more chances to see Heracross. Plus, giving Bulbasaur a goodbye after almost a hundred episodes of inactivity will not hit as hard as saying goodbye to Pokemon with constant activity before. Now I'll give it a check since we will have more chances for Heracross to shine and develop. Good ending. The battle against Gary was good, and with the larger buildup, it would be even better. Check! Woohoo! 
Next, we have bay leaf, one of my favorites, as you can see clearly by my sprite, and perhaps the reason why Gen 2 is on my top two Pokemon generations. Good beginning. The episode Chick the Chickadee did a rescue was a good start and showed a lot of personality. Check. Good middle. Remember turning over a new bay leaf? Well, that is one of my favorite episodes of all time because of the bay leaf stuff. And since she, she was also awesome in the episode playing with fire. However, the battle against Gary should have been a little extended a little for bay leaf's part. I mean, I get it, they have to make bay leaf faint right away to show how powerful Blastoise is, but that fast is just going to hurt her. Especially since she had a type advantage. Chikorita was very stubborn when she gets introduced. I think Bayleaf being stubborn to faint would have been a cool addition that would not only make her even better, but a battle better too. So it seems that like it was going to get a chick, but remember how was he going to insert Pokemon Heroes in the main television series in six episodes? Well, three episodes is going to be spent on what actually happened in the movie and Latias feeling depressed and all is going to want to become Ash's Pokemon. And Ash accepts. Then in the next two episodes, Bayleaf and Latias would fight over Ash. And I don't think it was a coincidence because only two Pokemon who like Ash in that way happen to be Joe. The Pokemon never get resolved. And in the last six of the six episodes, they'll find somebody. We really need to give Bayleaf somebody because they all know they aren't happening. But they need to keep it kid friendly. Plus Ash is apparently going with Serena. A character that's totally not introduced as apparently is quote by quote canon. In quote by quote, love interest more than 500 episodes later. And even if they never planned to have her, we still have Misty, and she was probably the original heroine for Ash until she apparently got a trace in Pokemon Chronicles. I haven't watched Pokemon Chronicles, so I don't know. And if you look at Ash's other quote by quote, love interest, there's someone at the end of their journey, besides Serena, Bayleaf, and Latias. By giving Bailey and Latias somebody, that'll leave Serena as the only one who didn't give somebody, and which will finally work out. And hopefully, the shippers don't tear the community apart, and I don't have to be tearing apart with it. Okay, dude. Now I'll give it a check. Good ending. Remember that battle in the Jota League I mentioned? That was more like the ending instead of the middle, since her goodbye is no goodbye. Now, Ash's Pokemon could be sorted into two categories in terms of goodbyes. One category are infrequently used Pokemon don't, don't really have a goodbye since they are almost always at Professor's Oak Labs anyways and only appear on screen either in competitions such as the Pokemon League or in their rare visits to Professor Oak's Lab which is, a hap which is like every 150 episodes which is every three years. Seriously, guys, the anime company, please, make the uh, visits more frequent or have the Pokemon come more often, please. They rarely leave Professor Oak's Lab. In the original series, the Pokemon that go under this category are Kingler, Mug, Tauros, and Snorlax. Snorlax may have only gone to Professor Oak's lab at the end of the Orange Lee Islands arc, but he was not used anyway in between him being caught and the Orange League, so he can be considered to be part of that category. Heracross also used to be considered as part of the category, even though he had some battles, but since I laid, delayed him leaving, which I'll get more into later, he is no longer part of the category. Our second category are Pokemon that are used more often and usually get an emotional goodbye, though that did not necessarily mean that they are never seen again and are no longer owned by Ash. As Butterfree's goodbye, no, Bulbasaur's, I was, Butterfree's the opposite, I mean, Bulbasaur's goodbye has not stayed at Professor Oak's lab. The Pokemon in this category are Butterfree, Pidgeot, Bulbasaur, Charizard, Squirtle, Primate, Lapras, Bayleaf, Quilava, Totodile, Noctowl, and Donphan. Heracross is also part of this category now. Pikachu, of course, is in the Nighter category, since he is Pikachu and will never leave the show, unless Ash leaves the show, too. Which, he kind of did. Well, Ash is Pikachu left the show, but not all, not the, not Pikachu, not the Pikachu themselves, because, guess what? They had another Pikachu in the reboot, called Captain Pikachu, or whatever his name is. Anyways, not a Kanto Pokemon got emotional goodbye, but a Jota Pokemon dinner. We're going to fix that. Let's talk about how these Pokemon got their goodbyes. Butterfree, Pidgeot, and Primeape got their goodbyes early on. Lapras got his goodbye at the end of the Orange Islands. Bulbasaur, Chorizo, and Squirtle got their goodbyes in... Johto? And that is the advantage they have. They're journeying throughout Johto until we get used to the new Johto Pokemon, and when a new Pokemon of their type is coming soon, they get an episode to do their emotional goodbye. And we are going to see them again, and we have hope because they deliver when they return for the Johto League. A few Jota Pokemon need to journey through Hoenn until we get used to the new Pokemon. 
Not only will we be able to get a great goodbye in an episode on it, but you'll also stay around for home and get used to them. Perhaps that's the reason why Jojo and Kanto feel connected in one series, unlike Hoenn and Sinnoh, which is each considered its own series. Now I understand why they do resets, it gives the new region's Pokemon more time to develop and more chances to shine. However, you can't just suddenly take out the main cast, and if you're going to do it, do it in a meaningful way. Don't just have Ash drop his Pokeballs at Professor Oak's lab. Anyways, what ending would Bayleaf have? It actually plays the whole Latias drama after Bayleaf's race with Gary's Arcanine, which was an episode Extreme Pokemon. In that final episode, I'll give her her goodbye, and after releasing her somebody needs help, plus Latias would also lead to for somebody, and this would return for the Jodali, and it would only be 20 to 30 episodes later. Remember, this is anime, so it will still take half a year to come back, so don't worry, her return would still be impactful. Okay, I know I'm speaking fast, and you guys are probably don't even understanding what I'm saying right now, which is why I'm going to have subtitles. I'll add subtitles eventually. Just take the auto subtitles for now, if you're watching this, like, if you're watching this video as it came out. Anyway, plus, look at Bulbasaur and Ambassador, which too was about 30 episodes before the Jodali, yet it was still impactful. And now we can give it a check. Even though that was a lot of work to improve on, Belief was still a fantastic character built for, but now she's better in past, and now time to say, Woohoo! By the way, I believe that a lot of Ash's Pokemon still have opportunities to be better if looked upon closely, but Bayleaf st still stands out to me. If he weren't getting a reboot, then I'm sure that Bayleaf's state of mind, which is having a crush on Ash right now, could be wrapped up. But since it is going to be a reboot, which already happened, it's just not a time of the script and the video making, then what we could have is when the new protagonist likely meets up a grown-up Ash, we could have her take in Bayleaf, because Bayleaf's really sad about her life right now. And don't worry, we will still visit all of Ash's other Pokemon too, who will be happy, but Bayleaf isn't. So now our protagonist will be training Bayleaf to her full potential, and will be having an interesting character arc going on. The other Pokemon fans are going to be happy. Bayleaf fans, which I'm part of, are going to be happy, because who doesn't want their favorite, or at least one of their favorite, get their state of mind wrapped up and get more developments. Anyways, I think that'll make an interesting story for both old and new fans to enjoy. Anyways, you guys are probably confused on what Pokemon Ash is having on his hand throughout Jota because of the amount of changes I'm doing and the way I'm, the speed I'm speaking. But don't worry, I'll review it from the beginning of Jota um, uh, after we finish the rest of the Jota Pokemon. We are at Quillava! Good beginning. Now, the episode Good Quill Hunting and Getting the Bugs Out show us something that Cyndaquil will have trouble doing and will need to earn. I like this because it was like Nynaeve's block from the Wheel of Time books. Not the show, since the show is the worst adaptation without doubt ever made. Yes, even worse than Chronicles of Narnia and Barty Jackson already made a video about one of the show's issues. Anyways, it felt so satisfying when Nynaeve finally lost her block in... I won't say it to voice probably. But a book which had a lot of time to me and Nynaeve to work on her block before and a lot of time for Nynaeve to deal with her without her block. Anyways, check. Good middle. When Cyndaquil loses her block in hot matches, that was certainly nice. Check. Good ending. Before, I would not have given a check, but with his journey extending throughout the Hoenn region until we get used to the new Hoenn Pokemon and we get a new goodbye, I'll be able to give it a check. Now, what goodbye will he get? Well, I'm going to make him evolve in his goodbye episode, and in the Sinnoh League, he will evolve in his Hyphalos song, which I'll get more into later. Yes, I know you've heard a lot more of more into later, but there are just so many things to talk about. Anyways, after his evolution, he's going to go to duty, and the duty will be similar to Pidgeot's duty, which was to protect the younger counterparts of their species. And I know that it's reusing the same plot device, but this is because of the reuse, it makes it more interesting. Remember how I had Ash lose his Pidgeot in some way at the end of the Orange Islands? Hold up. I just remembered something. Um... At the time of the script, the last po episode of Pokemon wasn't made, and in the last episode, I'm pretty sure Pidgeot came back. So yeah, um, I suppose you can say this is outdated, but um, it's how the original series could have been improved, right? Um, you know, ignore that. You know, let's just let's just go on because I don't think they ever planned to have that at the end. Look, we all know Pokemon Journeys is a bit mess. All right. And, um, clearly it was being made up as it goes, so they, I don't think they ever had Pidgeot as their plan, coming back as their plan, okay? So, yeah, I'm gonna keep on going on where, so let's see, where was I? 
Oh, remember how we had Ash lose his face in some way at the end of the Orange Island? Well, now Ash would not want to leave, let Quilava go, but in an extremely emotional way. Quilava says goodbye. Of course, he will come back, but don't worry. Now I can give it a check. Next we have Totodayo. Good beginning. While the episode of Totodayo deal was not focused on Totodayo, we see some of his personality and his good episode overall with Misty and Ash fighting over him, so I'll give it a check. Good middle. The Pokemon, the World Islands not only gave Misty a chance to shine, but also can learn Totodayo. Plus, the episode of Pokemon style was pretty good for Totodayo. However, Totodayo could use a bit more development, which could happen in battles, and I know we didn't give Mock or Snorlax, who are also there for jokes, much character development, but Totodayo is used very often and is a bigger deal. Plus, he's one of the three Jota starters, and the reason why I actually even had Pikachu to start well off with, and not an actual starter, was to help ensure that the people who chose other starters don't feel left out. Bailey and Kulava are well done in the anime, and help those who chose Cyndaquil and Chikorita, the pre-evolution, feel included. However, I don't think those who chose Totodile feel very included because of his lack of character development in him. So, now we can give Totodile a check for good middle, and now good ending. Now, as I already said, Totodile is mostly different shows, but that doesn't mean he cannot have an emotional episode. In fact, you know what is one of my favorite episodes of Season 7 of Monk, a show you probably never heard of? The episode Mr. Monk and the Magician, which is where one of the funniest characters got murdered! And her protagonist has to find a murderer and avenge him. It was very emotional, and I just love how her characters put their lives in danger to avenge it. And I absolutely hate the villain. He's more hateable, and he's so hateable, and he's more hateable than these things! Anyways, Tordidal's goodbye doesn't have to be as emotional as what I just told you, but does need to at least compare to Bailey and Kulava's goodbye. So what can we do? Well, we can have Tordidal saying goodbye to help support emotional cause. What's emotional about that? I mean, I didn't mean emotional cause, I mean just a cause. What's emotional about that? Well, the fact that many water Pokemon are in risk because of Team Magma and Team Aqua's role. Remember, we are in Hoenn now. Wait, I don't think I clarified. Did I clarify that enough? You know, you guys will understand when I'm gonna review the Jota Pokemon. And Totodile, feeling like he needs to help, decides that until Team Magma and Team Aqua's war end, he'll stay defending the water Pokemon with his small size and great strength he got while training under Ash. Totodile will thank Ash for all the good times they spent together and what Ash taught Totodile, and Totodile will say goodbye. Obviously, he's still returning for the Hoenn League, which I'll get more into later, and the Sinnoh League he participates in anyway. So, now I can give it a check. And head on to Noctowl. Good beginning. The episode Fowl Play did a good job. Check. Good middle. The episode From Ghost to Ghost did a fine job, but more instances where Noctowl uses a big brain and more struggles to find the right answer would help him make more interesting. Now we can give it a check. Good ending. The episode Playing with Fire was pretty good, but we need a goodbye. So, what we could do is have Noctowl pursue his dream job, which is to be an inventor or something like that. And he will have to leave Ash to become an impressionist so someone who can teach him. We'll add a few elements to make it more emotional and now we can give it a check. Next we have Dawn Fan. Right now Fampy, the last of Ash's Pokemon, not including Celebi and Latias, since I already talked about Latias and I will soon talk about the Celebi anyway, then though I won't talk much about Celebi, I don't really feel there is much of a need to. Anyways, good beginning. The episode Hatches a Plan did a good job. Check. Good middle. The episode Love Pokemon Sadly, good job too. Check. Good ending. What are we here with? What are you going to do for Hoenn? Remember Sonoran? We're going to treat it as a category 1 Pokemon so barely used until Battle Frontier, where we're going to practice rotation. So Fampy, along with other Pokemon, will get a chance to shine again at Battle Frontier instead of just the Hoenn Pokemon. Well, Fampy already had a chance to get to shine, but remember, we are extending his role, so I'm still trying to let him still be in Battle Frontier. Anyways. Instead of Ash just leaving his Pokemon for the no, we're going to give Fampy goodbye. So now she's disposal just for clarification. What goodbye? I'll let you guys decide in the comment section below. Obviously, we're going to have Ash carry some of his Hoenn Pokemon to Sinnoh. So that way, everyone gets used to the new Pokemon. And we'll continue going on like that, where Ash carries some of his favorites from the previous region until we get used to the new Pokemon. And then for good goodbye and uh, to the previous region's Pokemon until the end, of course. Check. Now that we finished, you'll love Ash's Pokemon, which is a big woohoo! Let's review what Ash has in his disposal from the beginning of Johto. We started off with Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Chorizo, and Squirtle before Heracross joins. What we're going to do now is have Bulbasaur leave before Bayleaf, who is currently Chikorita, join, and as Bulbasaur doesn't really get to do much anyways in Johto. And Bayleaf is already a grass Pokemon, so let her get more time. Then, 
We'll have Charles Relief and Kulava join, who's currently cynical and remains cynical throughout the entire original series. I'm just saying Kulava because that's what, what he's known by now, so because of his evolution in Sinnoh, his original evolution in Sinnoh. Then Squirtle Relief and Totodala joins. Now, Heracross originally left, we're going to keep him a little bit longer. Let's review. We have Pikachu, Cyndaquil, Chikorita, Totodile, and Heracross. For a while, we have been only having five Pokemon instead of six since I took it Bulbasaur. Now, what originally happened was we got Noctowl next, but since we're going to postpone him, and said we're going to have Celebi come next. Next, we're going to have six episodes of Celebi, Celebi, Shade, Legendary Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. Of course, it's going to turn out much different from the original movie because it's going to fit in a GS Ball plotline. Anyway, then the last of the six, we're going to have a goodbye. Obviously, she's still going to be Ash's Pokemon in his disposal. And now, we're going to have Noctowl come in. Chikorita soon evolves into Bayleaf, making Ash first and only evolution in Johto. And now, after Nerves of Steelix, we're going to have Heracross say goodbye and still be in Ash's disposal, obviously. And now, the Latias drama. After Latias drama ends, Bayleaf and Latias do say goodbye, and now Ash has four Pokemon. But only for a short time, Master Ash will get Don Fan, whose episode will be full time just by a few. Episodes currently fampy, and then Ash will get Love to leave soon. And then Ash's on hand Pokemon will be Pikachu, Cyndaquil, Totodile, Noctowl, and Fampy. Don't worry, Ash's five Pokemon won't be for long. And Noctowl will say goodbye, and then the Jota League commences. All of Ash's Pokemon come back for a league, which I'll extend later. And then Ash will leave for Jehoen with Pikachu, obviously, Cyndaquil, Totodile, and Fampy. Totodile will leave just before Corfish comes in. And Corfish Syndical will leave just before Torkoal comes in. And Fampy and a few other Hawaiian po Pokemon will leave near the end of Battle Frontier. And they'll leave the iconic Hawaiian Pokemon to good Sino before they get their goodbyes and on and on. Anyways, I hope that makes more sense now. We fixed all of Ash's Pokemon needs fixing. Now we can go to our next issue. Issue 3.5 The Music. Okay, this is going to be so brief that I didn't even mention it as a whole issue. And it isn't really an issue, but really just something you feel like had a bit more potential. Plus, it is somewhat budget-based, too. If I probably wouldn't even include it if it weren't for all my videos getting deleted and data transfer that didn't go as planned. And since I had to re-record everything and thought this, uh, to include this on the way. I suppose there's something good that comes from everything bad, I suppose. But sometimes the bad can overwhelm us. You know, my, all my Minecraft worlds were gone in that data transfer, anyways. Which, um, we're over 300 hours worth of work. Anyways, I'm going to talk about the outro of each episode, plus my Angry Bears channel. You know what? I'm not going to talk about everything I lost in the transfer, because I also gained some things, I guess. Anyways. Anyways, I'm going to be talking about the outro of each episode, and, um, let me give you some background. In the United States and probably some other countries, the original series was split into five seasons. Indigo League, The Orange Islands, The Jota Journeys, Jota Champions, and Master Quest. However, The Orange Islands, in terms of outro actually had a portion of Indigo League, making it 60 episodes about instead of 30-40. The first season had the Pokemon Wrap, which was a nice way to show how large the Pokemon universe is, and what they're going to explore in future episodes, and what they're going to explore in the games. However, eventually viewers will memorize the Pokemon and it will start to get repetitive. So in the next season, they had a series of 6 entertaining songs that were a mixture between Pokemon's content and its themes. Although they're a pretty enjoyable segment to watch and adds more depth to the show. This was great. A fraction of the set of seasons takes place in a new region, having the Pokemon wrap for the region, and then the rest of the Pokemon season music. However, in Johto, they start off with the songs, and then in the rest of the two seasons, they don't have anything, just extend the main episode a bit. Another thing that happened in the last seasons was that they didn't even have Who's That Pokemon, a very iconic part of the Pokemon anime. It's almost like taking a Pikachu. Which, um, they took it out of Pikachu, but they replaced it with Captain Pikachu, so they'll never, they'll, I don't think they'll ever take out Pikachu. Unless it becomes part of a political, symbolic thing. Anyways, so, season could, so, the, so the third season, which, of uh, the original series, also known as the first season of the Johto anime, could have done the rap for the region, and then the rest of the two seasons could have been karaoke mon. Well, there, I do think there was some exponential in that set of songs, but with more time, it could have been improved and more polished. Anyways, let's move on to our next issue, issue 4, the Pokemon Leagues. There are three major Pokemon Leagues throughout the original series, plus the Royal Islands, which I will get... Don't say it! Get into... No! The viewers are going to click out of the video if you say it! Get into... No! Soon. That's not better! And please give me a consistent voice! 
I'll like to tell you about this. I will give it to you eventually. Anyways, the first one is in the Indigo League. Now, Indigo League is infamous because of the big focus on Team Rocket, but in actual Indigo League, it is even more annoying when Team Rocket takes up half the episode. Plus, it is illegal in Pokemon to have an episode with no Team Rocket, so we're gonna make Team Rocket do something that's not disturbing the battle and take up the less screen time, and now we can extend a few battles. Plus, we're gonna have Ash with Richie that be as pathetic as it was in the original series, which was having Team Rocket chase down Ash for more than half the episode, making him tired along with a few other Pokemon, making it look as if Richie didn't really win by skill, and that's because Team Rocket interfered. So, now we can have a longer battle for Richie versus Ash. Now, some of you guys might be asking about a battle between Ash and Gary. Well, I'm not thinking of a battle, but I'm thinking of a competition which Ash will lose. So that way, when Ash beats uh, Gary in a comp the competition in Extreme Pokemon, it'll be more rewarding and will help build up for the Jota League battle. What competition? I'm thinking of a race too, and Ash will use Tauros, and Ash will lose because he didn't have control over him. In the Orange League, we will have a bit of a control issue to make the battle in the Orange League more rewarding after lo Ash lost the race and more interesting. Plus, Tauros will get his redemption against Gary's Pokemon anyways in the Jota League. Now, I think the Indigo League is in now in, in good condition, and now we can head on to the Orange League. The league itself is fantastic, but a bit of is not really. So I'm thinking of having a mini quest to Porter in which the Orange League champion will have to collaborate with Ash using his Dragonite to recover some artifact. That'll make the build up more interesting. And then two episodes of practice before the Orange League will help it look like Ash earned it more, because the Orange League is supposed to be Ash's redemption quest. Now the battle itself was great, and then now we can fill in the rest of the full episodes of battles, practices, and competitions to make the Build a big stronger. Plus, we will have Ash use all the other Pokemon he has at his disposal in those competitions, so that way they'll get their moments of shining the redemption quest too. Now we head on to the Jota League. I want to extend the Jota League not just for the new Pokemon Latias and Zelby, but also to help the Jota Pokemon Ash cut get, get more time since the Kanto Pokemon already cut their chances in the Indigo League and Orange League. Don't worry, I'm stuck keeping the Kanto Pokemon too, because my favorite part of a Pokemon League and probably many of yours too is seeing all of the Pokemon Ash caught and develop, get their moment to shine again in front of our eyes. Anyways, I'm planning on having an Ash vs. Richie rematch, 6v6, and an Ash vs. Cassie 3v3 battle because she seems to be important because she appeared in 3 episodes plus a main character of Pokemon Chronicles 2. So now we can fill in the rest of the filler episodes in more Jota League battles or battles of your competition. We also have the Rural Islands, and it consists of 13 episodes, and some of those were filler. We only need an introduction, Misty catching Corsola, the actual League, and the Luigi arc. That gives us a few episode slots, so I'll fill them up with Giovanni, Butch and Cassidy, along with more character development. Now, I'm not done yet. I need to talk about the Hoenn League, along with other future leagues. Because look, watching the same six Pokemon battle constantly is boring, plus the Pokemon League is like a season finale, and all the viewers are supposed to be able to come together and back and watch it together. Obviously, its main focus should be in the region's native Pokemon, but also bring back the other Pokemon Ash at the disposal, so that way they at least get a return and can shine again. Because it's been more than 100 episodes since we last saw them. We don't just want a few second cameo of the OG Pokemon. We want a battle to show that Ash has not forgotten this Pokemon he developed over a long period of time. And also show that the showrunners haven't forgotten the OG viewers too. If every super new Super Smash Bros. game completely took out a previous game's character and just kept Mario, do you think people would be able to enjoy each of the games? No, and this especially applied to the Pokemon journeys in Worldly. Because we saw Ash use the same group of Pokemon for each of his battles, and we barely saw them for a hundred episodes before the league. Isn't this supposed to be a celebration of all the seasons that came before? Have Ash use every single Pokemon he caught, even Primeape, to actually celebrate and bring everyone together. Or else it isn't a finale to a 1000 episode anime saga, it's just Ash catching extra stronger Pokemon for his last Pokemon League. Do you know why Memory of Light is considered one of the best Wheel of Time books? Because it is an actual finale to a 4.4 million word, FYI, four times the size of the entire Harry Potter series saga. There are over 2,000 characters in Wheel of Time, and the Memory of Light gives those characters moments to shine again and get a good finale. Its last battle might be longer than Harry Potter and the Source for Stone, but it was great and epic and brought conclusion. That is how a series finale should be like, and that is the end of the fourth and last issue. In conclusion, the Pokemon anime was great, especially the original series, but it had flaws. Its flaws were in the filler episodes, movies, characters, and the leagues. And not just the leagues on its own segment, but also the rest of the series itself too. In a video I mentioned, I recovered them and figured how to improve them while sticking to the show's limits. We remember, 
all shows have flaws, and you will never be able to cover all the flaws. But somebody else to help point them out could really help you improve on the product you made and are proud of, because Pokemon will probably never end, and knowing mistakes you made will help you do better next time. And who knows, maybe Pokemon will get a remake, and by knowing the goods and bads, it might be one of the few actually good remakes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!